Hello everyone, this is our poster for the project. We are group 2, my name is May, and my team members are Joanne, Peggy, Dora, Jessica, Abigail, Erica, our team leader is Bonnie, our TA is Lucia Dewey, and our professor is Ray Fong Lin. We are group 2 from class B. This is the content of our presentation. First, introduction. Second, description of method. And third, results. For introduction, our topic is to know how this specific noise might influence our ability to concentrate and how to achieve it um, using eye movement features such as blinking, pupil responses, and fixation, and questionnaires. We have two motivations. The first one is students' concentration. So as a student, we want to promote and improve our concentration. And the second one is productivity, to maintain and enhance productivity in workplace. The purpose of this project is to know the correlation between noise and concentration and eye movement with human voice and in a quiet environment. And to correlate eye movement with how brain processes and filters sensory information to know the importance to work in a quiet environment. The second part is a description of method. So these are our participants. For female, we have Erica, Chacha, May, Abby, Jessica. For male, we have Krishna, Jimmy, Frank, Eddie, and Elio. So all of our participants are YZU students who don't use glasses. These are the equipments we use for the experimental task. We have the computer, mouse, keyboard, um, mobile device for the noise, GP3 eye tracker, gaze point, and sound level meter. So the experimental task is to um, say the color of the text and not read the word. For example, um, number, the first one is green and the second one is purple, the third one is blue, and the fourth one is yellow. For the program, we use gaze point analysis, Excel, and Minitab. And the experimental task, so we have the monitor, and the test will be on the screen. We have the eye tracker to, um, to um, track the eye movement. We have the noise, and we have the participants. And we have a member who controls the computer and another member who records the answer. So this is the flow chart of our experimental procedure. So the first um, step is to prepare the gaze point analysis and read the rule of the test. The um, second step is to get some practice first before doing the test. So first, um, prepare the noise level and then check again the eye tracking position. And then once um, the noise is prepared and the gaze point is um, already checked, we can start the experiment and then record the participants' answers. So we have three independent variables. The so first one is noise level. So we have the no noise, so around 50 decibel, and noise of people talking, around 90 decibels. The second independent variable is the time spent. So each test is one minute. And the third independent variable is cognitive task, the rapid optimized naming. The dependent variable, we have three. The first one is participant's performance, test results, and the second one is subjective opinion using survey that they filled out. And the third one is eye movement, um, which is the FPOGD or fixation pupil of gaze duration. 
and LPD, left pupil diameter, and RPD, right pupil diameter, and etc. Now, let's see our results. We will explain each data, why it's significant or insignificant. We have two kinds of data. One is mean, one is SD. Mean represents the average value of a data set, indicating its central tendency, while a standard deviation, which is SD, measures the spread or dispersion of values around this average. This diagram shows the fixation point of gauge duration, right and left pupil diameter. The right pupil diameter to gender is significant, which means the gender has effect on RPD mean. For fixation point of gauge duration, according to our literature study, it doesn't show any significance during conversational listening in noise. And for pupil diameter, this diagram shows the right pupil diameter mean in different gender and noise intensity. The pupil diameter in the right eye of woman is larger than that of man. According to our literature study, pupil diameter effect when there is noise will be different for each person. When the sound is unpredictable, the pupil will get smaller, but when sound is predictable, pupil can get bigger. We believe that's one of the reasons why our pupil diameter isn't significant. All of the girl participants are from our team. They had listened the noise before they do the task. Through analysis of the video, it shows that when there's noise, participants will look to right and left, making their eyes not focus on one point. The left one shows the one without noise, and the right one shows the one with noise. You can see the difference between them. Next is about blink duration, blink number, left and right pupil millimeter. For the pupil millimeter, it just changed the unit from diameter to millimeter, so we're not going to discuss it again. This diagram shows insignificant data, means that there's no effect of gender and noise on most eye features in here. For blinking, experiments show that each person is different. Some people blink more often to focus when distracted by noise, some don't. For the blink number, According to our literature study, it doesn't show any significant different sounds and loudness. This diagram shows the chord magnitude and direction, and mean perception and performance. Mean perception to noise intensity is significant, which means noise intensity has effect on mean perception. For the chord, it doesn't show any significant when noise is present. This diagram shows mean perception in different gender and noise intensity. The mean perception will drop when there is noise. Performance to gender and noise intensity is significant, which means both gender and noise intensity has effect on performance. This diagram shows the performance in different gender and noise intensity. The performance will drop when there is noise. This diagram shows the answer from the survey. Everyone has the same feelings when there is no noise. People feel focused, relaxed, and easy to do the task. And for the one have noise, almost everyone has the same feelings too. They feel distracted, stressed, and hard to do the task. Our conclusion. This study provides us with a better understanding of the connection between noise, eye movement, and concentration. First, eye feature that have effect on noise. We can know if the p-value is significant or not, can be an indicator to understand one's behaviors. Second, noise can impair concentration. As can be seen in the decline in participants' performance, when exposed to sound levels exceeding 19 decibels. Our future studies. It has potential for the future studies with following. In educational settings, it can aid in improving class attention. It can also be used in medical diagnostics and human-computer interactions. 
That's all. Thank you.